Osseo. Osseo. Okay, starting right off very, very recently, the new governor of the state of California, Newscombe, um, made an official apology as to uh, what has remained and survived Native America uh, for genocide. He used the word genocide. Yeah, and the Tribune did a, a very full body a report on this better than the TV news. Um, so he kind of countered the first governor of California absolutely, you know, declared, you know, a genocide. That is, um, he employed the state militia um, to the extermination of all Indians and the state subsidized murder in the pain of scalps um, for anybody who had black hair, actually. <clears throat> and uh, so he's exactly countering. And that was the first of anything that we know of that's come, ever come from any government here like that. Now, last week, another first, um, a historical celebration at the Presidio over here of um, this, the Spanish mission founded by Henry Pedro Sierra, <clears throat> like that. Um, I was on a, with, with anthropologists and archaeologists, Randy Hawkins did a project there in the Presidio, uh, focusing on the leather jacket soldiers, which were the, the first Spanish here. And so anyway, it was a celebration of that 250 years. Uh, but what was the first is the Kumeyaay. The Kumeyaay this time were integrated and in, integrated in into it. They've been mentioned before, but you know only as you know they are here. Uh, but this time, actually, in full participation, and um, they had some flagpoles there. I think of the Mexican and the flag of Spain and the American flags. And for the first time, now the Kumeyaay nation was raising up a flag, a Kumeyaay nation flag, you know, with ceremony. And the chairperson, you know, for the Kumeyaay said, now, now we are recognized as a nation among nations. We're no longer being ignored. So that's a very important. Okay, another one. I, I've been given an education in Cherokee. And um, along with that, you know, some, we we'll call it Cherokee history, speaking of history, is the people of the Shawnee. The Shawnee in Cherokee is the Shomanogi, meaning the Southerners. And um, as the Cherokees had offered, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, where the asylum. people at the border want uh, asylum? Asylum. <clears throat> asylum, is that what you call it? Um, the Cherokees offered that to Hieronimo uh, people, the Americans called Apaches, uh, to come to North Carolina. Uh, you know, so offered them that, that, that place. But earlier in that, also, the Cherokees granted, actually, to the Shawnee. That the Shawnee are from the Savannah River down there, southern South Carolina, around there, like that. So somehow they migrated up to Ohio. Ohio, by the way, is the Iroquois word for beautiful. <laughs> and um, that's where they were and, and how the leader, Tecumseh, is who I am featuring here. That's the portrait I have here. <laughs> and so other than my years and years ago education in that subject, here I'll, you know, bump that up. <laughs> Tecumseh was among the most celebrated Native American leaders in history, known as strong and eloquent orator who promoted tribal unity. Uh, he made significant sacrifices to repel the Native to repel the Americans from the Native American lands. Um, in 1808, his brother, known as the Prophet, and he founded a Native American village <clears throat> that came to be called Prophet's Town near a present-day Lafayette in Indiana. And it became a very large multi-tribal community and was the central point of Tecumseh's political and military alliance. Uh, his confederation fought the United States but he was unsuccessful trying to get the government to rescind um, land cession treaties. Uh, and he, in 1811, he traveled south and tried to, you know, recruit other uh, nations, you know, to resist, you know, the, this advancement of these other people like that. <clears throat> and uh, while he was doing that, you know, the Americans attacked his town, Prophet's town, under William Henry Harrison, you know, called the Battle of Tippy Canoe. And uh, uh, the British and, and the Shawnee were allies. They made al allies and they retreated from that and the Americans' uh, army you know, destroyed the town and made it even worse by 
yeah, desecrating the people's graves. Um, Tecumseh's Confederacy continued to fight the United States after forming the Alliance of Great Britain in the War of 1812. Um, and it was with this time that the U.S. naval forces took control of Lake Erie and the British and Native Americans had to retreat up into Canada where the American army can follow, continued to follow them and engage them and Tecumseh was killed in this engagement. And his death was the end of the war. Uh, and of the, the end of the war was the end of the Pan-Native American Alliance. <laughs> and within a few remaining years, uh, the tribal lands you know, were all ceded to the U.S. government and opened up for um, settlement and so forth. Since then, he has become an iconic folk hero in America, indigenous and Canadian history. So that's to, to be remembered, you know, as somebody who, who is, you know, if we would like to change Mount Rushmore and put other people up there. <laughs> <laughs> that, by the way, is a, it's a racist statement. It was made by a, a you know, sculptor, but a member of the Ku Klux Klan, you know, as a, a definite racist statement. And so, like that. And this is what I have here for Tecumseh. Um, a man of, of vision and determination because he did have this vision of an, an actual Native American state or, or country. And uh, what's really wonderful with this because I have mm -hmm -hmm, our favorite uh, Mary Oliver and her poem of Tecumseh. I went down not long ago to the Mad River under the willows. I knelt and drank from that crumpled flow. Call it what madness you will. There is a sickness worse than the risk of death, and that's forgetting what we should never forget. Tecumseh lived here. The wounds of the past are ignored, but hang on. Like the litter that snags among the yellow branches, newspapers and plastic bags, after the rains. Where are the Shawnee now? Do you know? Or will you have to write to Washington and even then, whatever they said? Would you believe it? Sometimes I would like to paint my body red and go out into the glittering snow to die. His name meant shooting star. From Mad River country north to the border, he gathered the tribes and armed them one more time. He vowed to keep Ohio, and it took him over 20 years to fail. After the bloody and final fighting at Thames, it was over, except his body could not be found. It was never found. And you can do whatever you want with that. Say, his people came in the black leaves of the night and hauled him to a secret grave, or that he turned into a little boy again and leaped into a birch bark canoe and went rowing home down the rivers. Anyway, this much I'm sure of. If we ever meet him, We'll know it. He will still be so angry, so uprightedly burning. Didn't General Sherman have to come say?